What you've heard about speed till now, forget it. Your coach, your teacher, even your science books have told you only half the truth. You think sprinters run fast because their muscles are strong? Wrong. The real secret is something connected to a trampoline, a bow and arrow, and basketball. And believe me, if you don't know this, you'll never reach your real speed. Research says that humans alone cannot generate enough force to sustain a speed beyond eight meters per second. So then how did Bolt, Gay, Lewis become the fastest in history? Here comes the hidden truth. Our body itself is a spring, and this spring makes you bounce with every step. The problem is that 90% of people train this mechanism wrong. Result? Injury, speed loss, and years of effort wasted. But if you understand this concept from tomorrow itself, you can feel the difference in your running. And the most exciting part, in this video I'll explain to you step by step with examples how this spring effect works and how you can safely use it in your training. So listen carefully because in the next eight minutes, your entire thinking about sprinting is going to change. Now the question is, what's the simplest way to understand speed? Imagine you're jumping on a trampoline. You alone can't go that high, but the trampoline's spring pushes you upward. That's exactly how a sprinter's body works, like a spring that stores energy and then releases it. And this isn't limited to a trampoline. Take a bow and arrow. Unless you pull the bowstring and store energy, the arrow can never... From here, the real game begins. Because a sprinter's speed isn't decided only by force, it's defined by two things, stride length and stride frequency. Stride length means how much distance you cover in every step. Stride frequency means how quickly you take those steps. If you take very long jumps, you'll cover distance, but your frequency will drop. And if you take very fast short steps, the frequency will be high, but the distance will be less. This is where the mind gets into conflict. What's better, longer steps or faster steps? The real secret is the perfect balance of both. Imagine a kid trying to take a long jump, but falling down, while another kid takes quick short steps and easily moves ahead. A sprinter's job is to balance these two extremes, make the stride as long as possible, but at the same time maintain maximum frequency. And this is exactly where 90% of people get confused, because our brain naturally chooses extremes, either long steps or fast steps, but the winner is the one who controls both together. But here lies another shocking truth. No matter how much you balance, there's a limit beyond which humans cannot sustain speed on their own. Research says sustaining speed beyond eight meters per second is practically impossible because our muscles alone cannot produce that much regional force. Think about a trampoline made of normal cloth. You can jump, but you'll never get the same bounce. In the same way, if our body depends only on muscles, such speed is never possible. The real magic comes from the body's spring mechanism. Tendons and muscles together store extra energy and release it the moment the foot touches the ground. Without this spring effect, even world record sprinters would remain just average runner. And this is the reason why if you ever thought I train so much but still don't get world-class speed. The answer lies in this natural limitation. But the good news is that this limit can be pushed with smart training and the right drills. And I'm about to reveal that secret to you. So now the question arises, if muscles alone cannot generate that much force, then how do world-class sprinters reach such speed? The answer lies inside our body itself. Our muscles and tendons together form a natural spring. Imagine pulling a bowstring. Until you release it, all the energy remains stored. And the moment you release, the arrow shoots out like lightning. In the same way, our tendons store energy with every step and release it in the next step. That means a sprinter's body doesn't run fast just because of muscles, but because of this hidden spring mechanism. And this is the secret that 90% of runners never understand. They work hard on muscle strength in the gym, but forget to train the spring effect. Result? Speed reaches a limit too soon. Now imagine, if you learn to stretch your muscles like a bowstring, then every step of yours can shoot out like an arrow. That's the hidden advantage that separates sprinters from average runners. But the real magic of the spring shows up when the foot touches the ground. A normal person thinks ground contact means slowing down or stopping. But the truth is that ground contact is where real acceleration begins. Think of bouncing a basketball on the floor. It doesn't just stop, it comes back up with equal energy. That's exactly what happens in a sprinter's foot. As soon as the foot touches the ground, the tendons compress and store energy, and in the very next fraction of a second, that energy is released to make the step even more powerful. Now the question in your mind will be, so is more forceful contact better? No, the real secret is quick contact. The faster the foot touches and bounces off the ground, 
the more energy you get back. And this is exactly the point where champion sprinters leave average runners behind. Because they don't just push hard on the ground, they bounce smartly. If until now you thought that speed is only a race of strength, now understand, it's actually a game of timing and spring effect. And the next question naturally arises. If this spring is so powerful, then what happens when you overload it in training? That's exactly what I'm about to show you. Till now you've understood that the spring effect of our body is the real secret of speed, but here lies the biggest trap. Because if this spring is trained the wrong way, it can become your biggest weakness too. Think about jumping on a trampoline from normal height. It's fun, but what if someone jumps on it from a great height? Either the spring will break or your legs. This is the same mistake many sprinters make. They start overloading the spring effect, extra plyometric jumps, overspeed training, and uncontrolled drills. In the beginning, it feels like speed is increasing, but inside, tendons and joints start breaking down. Psychology says our brain believes more effort, more result. But in performance training, this belief is the most dangerous one. Because here, smart load makes you a champion. Overload makes you sit on the sideline. Now ask yourself, would you want to be that runner who trains extremely hard for two months but wastes one year in injury? Or that sprinter who, with controlled load, consistently develops speed for years? This choice is the real game changer. So now the question is, if overload is so dangerous, then what's the right way? For a sprinter, the real purpose of training is to overload the spring effect in a controlled way. Just like adding a turbo in a car, it gives a sudden boost, but if the engine is weak, it'll explode. Similarly, a parachute gives you extra resistance, which teaches your body to apply more force in a smart way. Or simple plyometric drills, like bounding, hurdle hops, single leg jumps. These exercises make the tendons stronger so that they can store and release more energy. But the secret here is the same, control. You have to load enough to make the spring stronger, but not so much that the spring breaks. And this is the difference between average sprinters and elite sprinters. The average sprinter breaks himself every day. The elite sprinter builds himself every day, step by step, with controlled overload. And once you catch this mindset, you'll stop seeing training as punishment and start seeing it as a science. From tomorrow itself, every drill, every jump, every run will start giving double power to your speed. But now comes the final question, how do you balance all of this? So learn this too. Now you've understood that a sprinter's real speed isn't built by running alone, but by a perfect combination of force plus frequency plus spring effect. But think about it. If you keep doing the wrong drills, your legs will never bounce like a spring. And that's the reason why most athletes never reach their top speed. I'm going to make a separate video where I'll show you those secret drills that top athletes use to skyrocket their stride frequency and force. Tell me in the comments, which drill do you want to see first, for power or for frequency? Whichever option gets more comments, that's the one I'll upload first. Like if you found today's breakdown helpful, subscribe so you don't miss the drills video and hit the bell icon because your speed journey starts from here.